Hello, everyone. Welcome to In Case You Missed It. My name is Larry Semenigotes. Our first story today is about what some may call justice unserved. Some litigants in Colon County, Texas, reached out to us alleging that the family court system is failing them. Luckily, a new nonprofit organization is saying they're going to tackle that issue. Let's take a look. A Texas nonprofit is making sure judges will be held accountable for misconduct. We feel that we need accountability in, in all areas, but especially our judges. And we have a lot of judges where you're not going to have a complaint. We have a lot of judges who are good, honest people. So that, that's not what I'm talking about, but we have a lot of judges who are not. Jennifer Lundy is the executive director of the Texans for Judicial Accountability, or TJA. I was a court reporter in uh, another state, uh, and then I worked for the Senate, uh, for two different senators here. She says the organization advocates for the court system transparency and reforming the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. You file complaints with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct whenever you have a complaint about a judge. They've had 27,000 complaints in the last 20 years, and only 212 of those have been published. Um, that's less than 1%. Jennifer says there are only 15 members in the commission, which serves the entire state of Texas. They are appointed by elected officials, including Texas Governor Greg Abbott. We want it all to be open. We want you to be able to see every complaint. We want the number of staff members for the SCJC to, to go up. And we want the um, commissioners to be public. That's our primary goal. The TJA also helps bring to light the stories of litigants who filed complaints against judges. Many of the cases are reportedly about family courts. Let's say, for example, the criminal court judges. Those judges have to put out um, the law. Um, they have to give absolute disclosure of the laws they're following. Family court doesn't have to do that. Among the litigants fighting for their own justice is Scott Wedge. This Texas dad and combat veteran has been in the middle of a complicated divorce and custody battle. He's been trying to get his well-deserved time with his son. I, I had taken over as a primary parent and had been for five and a half years until last September when the judge ruled 50-50 from the moment he came out. And I was helping him, you know, cutting the umbilical cord to... Uh, taking the handprints and the footprints and um, and I remember the way he looked at me with this questioning look like what is going on and I told him I you know, no matter what happens in life you know you'll always be my best friend I'll always be around he says his now six-year-old son is coping with quite a different life one without his dad always by his side so I love him and I love spending every moment with him uh, but I know the impact on him you know I'm an adult I can handle separation um, but my concern is in his growth and development in their long-term lasting impact. Scott is doing above and beyond to make sure his son is thriving. As I had to take a job at Cub Scouts, a, a, a volunteer position that is probably the worst, uh, probably the hardest uh, to do. And I did that so I would have the ability to dictate when some of those activities would happen uh, so our son could attend those as it's something he loves. The divorce and custody battle have taken a toll on all aspects of Scott's life. I wasn't asking for millions of dollars. I, I just wanted enough to, uh, you know, obviously take care of my debt, have enough for my son and I to go on. But instead, what has happened is I have absolutely nothing. Uh, she, ha you know, my ex now has all the money and has the money for lawyers. There's still false accusations happening all the time. Scott says the judge allegedly ignored most of his evidence and was more biased toward his ex-wife. Uh, the judge flat out said she didn't care how much debt that I had and she was going to give me a very small amount that still left me heavily in debt that I would never get out. Uh, she, it was clear during those four hearings uh, throughout the year that she did not want to hear a full new trial. Scott's case is under Judge Lindsey Wynn, the 468th District Court in Colon County, Texas. Together with him, many litigants under Judge Wynn are accusing Wynn of making biased ruling and ignoring evidence. Some of them tell NTD they don't want to speak out because they fear retaliation. And I'm worried about speaking out today that it's going to ultimately result very quickly in minimal, even less time than it is now with our son. My hope in speaking here today that it will give a voice and justice to others, boys, girls, other parents. They can't complain about her like I can. Because if they have children in the divorce, she controls the access to those children. 
So, of course, those litigants are going to be less likely to want to speak out against her. But I'm speaking out against her. I created a website that's voteagainstjudgewin.com. Sherry Alexander's divorce case is also ruled by Judge Wynn. She accused Wynn of dismissing her premarital financial agreement as well as other evidence. My case involves a uh, premarital agreement, which was primarily protect my separate property business that I had long before I married this man. So I have all these, these provisions in the premarital agreement that says that he promises to hold my separate property harmless and to indemnify me against his obligations. And she ruled every single one of them is invalid. Sherry's calling on the public to impeach and vote against Judge Wynn. She says people should not simply vote along party lines. NTD has contacted Judge Lindsey Wynn's office but have not received a response. And my, what I'm doing is I'm hoping that somebody runs against her, anybody, anybody that's willing to uphold the law, I will vote for that person. You know, in Texas, it's such a down ballot race and they do run as Democrat and Republican. So someone's most likely just going to vote based upon D or R, based upon what affiliation you are. Jeff Morgan is a parental rights advocate who has been ensuring transparency in the family court system. He attends hearings as a court watcher and interviews victims of judicial misconduct on his YouTube channel. So I've spent a lot of hours actually observing the court since COVID took place, probably over 200 hearings in person, virtually, uh, on YouTube, whatever. Uh, I know that there's, court fan that there's court corruption all over the place, so I started to actually watch it, record it. Jeff says litigants like Scott and Sherry would have to take risks and lose more money in order to appeal rulings. That if they dare question a judge, they have to fear retaliation. But I've had many people that I've talked with that have told me of a lot of injustices, due process violations, not being able to submit evidence. And then you'll have to fight it and take it to appeal and try to get it reversed and overturn. And then after that happens, you'll get remanded back to the same judge that puts you in that in that position in the first place. I go back into court for enforcement. I'm going to be dealing with the same thing I've dealt with all year. Canceled hearings, you know, delayed hearings. I mean, it's frequent. I waited up to seven hours in her court. According to Jeff and Jennifer, the 468 district is only one among many that are facing scrutiny. When we cannot trust one third of our government and that's not even talking about the other part, but we cannot trust them. Something is very wrong here. And I hear reports of this again and again. This happens throughout our state. We have a very big problem. Do we want these judges to know that we are watching and they are not going to be reelected if they continue down the path that they are. And when you have a case that you know that the judge is just ruling because it's the way he wants to rule and not because it's the law, uh, we, we want you to file a complaint, and we want to get your complaint and your case. We would like to be able to publish it. Although there's no official evidence, the litigants' stories show us that many innocent lives could be forever changed by the judge's rulings. Biased or not, advocates say as more people are speaking out, they look forward to more transparency and accountability in the Texas judicial system. In our next and final story for today, we're bringing you yet another possible case of discrimination. A Christian man was fired from his job after sharing his religious beliefs online. What is he saying and advocating for? More details to follow. A Texas-based dancer and choreographer is facing cancel culture for an online post on social media. I basically was making a post about how I understand being a father, being a husband, and the difficulty that people don't experience or don't understand if they haven't experienced those things. And I was basically making a post saying I understand it more and how June is also Men's Mental Health Month, but it's overshadowed by the mockery of what people make the rainbow represent. Donovan Gibbs says he was sharing his religious beliefs. Because to me, the rainbow represents something completely different of what God intended it to represent. Um, and because of that statement of my stance on what I believe God intended the rainbow to represent kind of led to my firing um, on one of the top conventions, dance conventions in the United States. Donovan's statements received mixed responses. I had people in my DMs basically calling me a Bible thumper, and people in my DMs calling me a homophobe, and people in my DMs calling me, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, but then on the other hand of that, I had so many other people that were so supportive of me and 
We're like, because of you being let go, we're not going to attend this convention anymore. And we're not taking our kids to this and we're not going to support this. Throughout Donovan's career, he's danced alongside famous celebrities and appeared on popular shows, including So You Think You Can Dance. Uh, growing up, you know, I grew up in the hip hop scene, uh, both the street freestyle scene as well as the choreography scene. Donovan and his wife welcomed their baby earlier this year. He shares with NTD as a new dad. He's speaking out against the hypersexualization of children through dance. I think it comes down to what kids are seeing on social media. I think um, social media kind of gives kids a fast look at what's happening in the industry. So there is a lot of adult classes that happen in L.A., whether it's done in heels and it's, you know, more on the sexualization side of women or whatever the case may be. And kids have a firsthand view of it because it's on TikTok, it's on their phones, it's on Instagram. And I think because of that, these kids and these youth think that's what it takes to be in the industry. So then they wind up copying exactly what they are seeing. He says educators in the dance community are not doing enough to protect children. As educators, as dance educators can do way better about protecting these kids and protecting the youth um, and putting our own egos and our own pride aside and what we want for ourselves. Really look at what do these kids need? You know, like what type of community are we trying to raise these kids to, you know, be in charge of one day. Donovan says he only dances to Christian hip-hop music for a reason. Even music that they say is clean, it's it could be clean by cuss words and stuff like that, but they're still talking about dreads, they're still talking about women, they're still talking about even going out to parties and, you know, wasting their life away. And I think for me, what I try to do and instill in my kids is the opposite of that. According to the dancer, hip-hop has strayed from its original form and culture. Yeah, so for me, I'm going to speak on behalf of the hip-hop community. So hip-hop community that started off in New York was all about um, community and it was all about getting people off of the street. So when you think of hip-hop, especially nowadays, it can have a negative connotation to it, but that's not how it originally started. It originally started with, you know, brothers and sisters getting together to do something that they love to keep them from being in gangs and keep them from violence and stuff like that. So that's how the community of hip-hop started. And Donovan says despite facing backlash and losing work, he stays true to his faith in God. I think I think for me, I just want people to open their eyes that there are principalities to this world. There is lightness and darkness. There's there's a spiritual warfare going on right now in our community, left and right. And I think we need to become aware of that and we need to do our part to fight back. He and his wife are currently co-directors of a pre-professional dance company called DNA Creatives where they're training many young dancers for conventions and competition. Thank you for watching. I'm Larry Semenigotes. Have a great day.